This video is sponsored by Vanta. Vanta automates compliance for SOC 2, ISO 27001, and more, saving you time and money while helping you build customer trust. Learn more about Vanta in a few moments. <sighs> Dang it, Monday morning, tired and groggy. Last thing I feel like doing is working. Time to log in. Well, I think I'm done for the week. Excusing the bad acting, what happens next when a company experiences a data or security breach? Whether it's ransomware, data exfiltration, or a database dump exposed on the dark web, what happens next? Well, I've always wondered this question, and in today's video, I'm going to be overviewing the entire process from initial notification to closure. Breaking this down into eight total steps, I will overview what goes on throughout the process. All right, so step one is the breach response team. After receiving an initial alert signal, the first step is to mobilize a computer information response team, or CERT. Now, a CERT can take many different forms, including an internal security operation operations center or incident response team, an outsourced third-party SOC or managed detection response team. You can go and call a third-party on-call incident response teams, or it can just simply be the IT guy, depending on the size and scale of the operation. Now, depending on how mature a security program is, a CERT will follow an established, defined incident playbooks, even if it's an outsource or third party who is uh, managing or following those playbooks. These incident playbooks define the key stakeholders to contact depending on the systems affected, the roles and responsibilities of the incident response team personnel, the incident classification and categorization, and all of this is created for identifying and documenting the entire incident from containment all the way to uh, recovery and the communication plan surrounding the entire incident. The key to these playbooks is to have a defined process and time is of critical essence. So almost immediately after mobilizing the CERT team, the next step is containment. Incident responders have to act fast to compartmentalize and contain the threat, especially when it's ransomware or an exploit or dropper that's been planted onto a server or system, or it's data exfiltration that's been detected. It's very important that you contain a threat as soon as possible. Now, containment involves isolating the affected devices or network of hosts. Disconnecting these flag devices immediately from the internet and local network is of very importance. Now, depending on the criticality of the system, it's also important to maintain the host state as this will act as key evidence for a later step in the, the forensic section. Now, containment doesn't necessarily stop here. Depending on how other systems have been impacted, there could be persistent mechanisms already deployed. And how really do incident responders find these persistent mechanisms that have maybe been implanted? Well, logging, analysis of traffic, and threat hunting. By utilizing centralized network monitoring, endpoint detection response, SEM, SOAR, and open and closed source threat intelligence, incident responders will probe for and create queries to find potentially uh, other impacted systems in the network. By using the data from the known infected hosts, incident responders can write queries on these systems to see if other machines are exerting very similar behavior, such as reaching out to the same domain, IP address, or exerting some unusual behavior. Creating IOCs or indicators of compromise from these infected machines can help the incident responders find other systems that have also been affected. And again, if possible, incident responders will try to not power down uh, or maintain the machine's state so that uh, you can have or collect evidence from the forensic step. So step three, eradication, is very important as well. After investigating the logs and scoping the impact of what has happened, the next step is to remove the entry port, malware, or malicious artifacts from the environments after taking a forensic snapshot or backup and storing that in a completely isolated environment. 
The incident response team and stakeholders will uninstall malware, remove registry entries, schedule tasks and services, system files, and much more. And, and this is a multi-step process as the team needs to know what to remove, which systems are impacted, and where the malware has been implanted. The root cause of the breach needs to be eradicated first, or else malware or any other exploit can be dropped again. Affected systems should be immediately hardened and patched, and updates should be applied as well. Now, frequently, a backup will be used to restore to a good, known, healthy state but data loss may occur at this point. It depends on how frequent those backups are taken and where those backups are taken, whether it's on a server or impacted user workstations. Next step is damage assessment and recovery. Identifying what data has been accessed and what has been compromised, security teams will begin the process of collecting evidence on the damage. What did the adversary do? This is a very important step as authorities, compliance, and regulatory frameworks will require companies to contact authorities and their customers. For example, HIPAA requires that companies notify authorities if personally identifiable information or health information has been accessed. The ISO 2700 framework requires that companies have a data breach and incident response plan. And this leads me into today's uh, sponsor, which is Vanta. Vanta automates compliance for SOC 2, ISO 2700, and more, saving you time and money while helping you build customer trust. Plus, you can streamline security reviews by automating questionnaires and demonstrating your security posture with customer-facing Trust Center, all powered by Vanta AI. Over 7,000 global companies like Atlassian, Flow Health, Quora use Vanta to manage risk and prove security in real time. Using the link in the description below or the QR code on the screen here, you can get $1,000 off at Vanta. That's $1,000 off by clicking either the link in the description below or the QR code scanned here. So the next process is restoring and returning affected systems back to a known good healthy state. Using reliable backups, if there are backups available, teams will deploy those healthy snapshots to workstations, servers, and instances that have been impacted. Transitioning into step five, forensics, the overall question is what happened? So specialized units in incident response team or security operations centers, or even third parties will examine and analyze what happens to those compromised systems. Forensic teams will use images and snapshots stored in that isolated secure environment and perform detailed analysis. Now, there's a lot of analysis that can happen. Three main analysis include file system analysis, which examines the file systems for unusual, hidden, or unauthorized modifications made to the file system. Memory analysis, which uses memory dumps to detect running malware and the active processes. And then, of course, malware analysis. By performing static and dynamic malware analysis, uh, seams can understand the behavior, capabilities, and impact of what happened. Using closed and open source tools such as FTK Imager, Splunk, System Internals, Wireshark, Ida Pro, Ghidra, and many more, teams will document all the findings, and these will be created in the incident report with the detailed analysis being drafted up and published to company stakeholders and executives. The indicators of compromise or IOCs created during the threat hunting step uh, should be created and then published to the community for the larger benefit. And these can include malicious IP addresses, hashes, domains, Sigma, Yara, rules, and much more. Step six is to notify the authorities. Like I said, companies may be required or could be required to contact the authorities with the countries that they do business in. It's often a legal requirement. In the United States, the FTC and FBI can be contacted via phone number or on their associated websites. Company legal teams should be involved. As much information and evidence should be provided to authorities, including all of the detailed analysis reports, the indicators of compromise, and any other associated detail. Working closely with law enforcement agencies can help the chances of identifying and arresting these adversaries. So it's important that companies do their part in providing as much evidence as possible. 
Next step is to notify your affected customers and partners. Now, if you have used the internet within the last two decades, you've probably received some sort of email related to a data breach or data access. And based off of these regulatory compliances and laws, uh, companies have to notify their customer or user base. For customers, you'll often see those emails published uh, with a, a detailed overview of maybe what happened as well as specifics of the type of information that's been accessed and uh, maybe some steps or ways to protect your data. And finally, for step eight, it's learning from the incident. So after action meetings with incident response teams, the internal security department, company executives, and important stakeholders will be uh, conducted to overview what happened, how the team reacted, and overall process improvements. Depending on the scale, size, and data accessed by these adversaries, uh, companies may face some legal or civil repercussions, aka lawsuits. Uh, the process can be prolonged throughout several years, and given that it's a legal process, it probably is going to take many years. So from steps one to eight, that is the process that a security team will likely follow from initial notification to the closure of the breach. Overall, it's important that processes are defined and that teams and teammates know what to do during an active ongoing incident. If you're interested in learning more about the Security Operations Center or SOC or just that type of role, I'll leave some resources in the link in the description below. And yeah, hopefully, maybe, possibly you've learned something new. And until the next time, have a good day.